Hello and welcome fellow adventurers! Today I'm taking you through some of the magic found in Outward. So to start with, I'm going to be taking you through some of the runic magic. Here you'll find we are in the city of Berg. This is the one found in the Emanac Forest. And this is where you want to go if you want to gain the runic magic skills, which is what you can currently see in my hotbar. You want to come talk to this man here. I'm assuming his name is Flasse, the Sage Trainer. He's located in this top area of Berg here. When you talk to him, how can I help you? And ask to train, you'll find that these here are the four runes you need to learn. Now you can learn these without going on to learn any of the chain link skills, which means that even if you don't want to go on to learn these, you can still use these runic abilities. And they are really diverse and useful for many different situations. I have gone on to learn all of the skills and you'll see the well of mana is really useful to have a good increase in your max mana. I went for the full plus 10 from the ley line so I've actually got 240 max mana at the moment. This one then gives you access to more combos and is really useful to go for to get the full versatility of those runic magics. And then you've got this final choice to make. I went for the internalized lexicon because normally you have to be holding this book, the lexicon, to be able to cast the runic magic. It's an offhand weapon which means you can still wield a sword or an axe of some kind but is quite limiting so I decided that I wanted to be able to wield a staff and chose that as my How top can I skill. Help However, the runic prefix does give some additional effects to some of those runic abilities such as gaining uh, elemental resistances or giving wider AoEs to some of the damage abilities so depending on how much the lexicon annoys you depends on which choice you'll want to make. Right, I'll now show you the different combinations you can do for the runic magic. But obviously this is with the additional ones unlocked with the chain link. So some of these might not be the ones you can do if you haven't gone for that additional ability. But if you want to use runic magic, as you can see it does take up four hotbar skills, I would recommend getting those additional skills. So to start with, one of the main skills that you'll find you'll use a lot of is red followed by green. And that puts down essentially a trap. So it does ethereal damage. So when an enemy runs into it, it does a burst AoE, will damage any enemies near it, um, but particularly the main target. And it does a lot of damage. You can only have one down at a time. But you'll find that if you're going for this type of magic, you'll often find you'll put one down, they'll hit it, it does a bit of impact, and you'll put another one down as they continue to chase you. The other main damage ability you'll have, if you've gone for the additional um, runic prefixes, is first is green, followed by blue, summons a lantern. Very useful source of light, means that you don't have to worry about having some sort of other lantern with you. And with that present, you can then go green followed by red, which shoots out a lightning ball, which does do AoE damage. You can target an enemy with that, and it'll go to it. I've also found that even without targeting, if there's an enemy nearby, it tends to auto-target the enemy. So really useful using a mixture of these um, traps that you put on the floor and the lightning balls you can shoot at your enemies. Other abilities you can use, so obviously you can have your own weapon, such as the staff out, or you can do red, followed by purple, which actually summons an ethereal sword. Does a lot of damage, especially against things like ghosts, anything that has um, weakness to ethereal. Additionally, with the runic prefixes, you can do red, followed by purple again, and now it's a two-handed greatsword. So if you've got preference for using things like that, you can obviously go for these options. It does disappear after time, so you've got to be careful not mid-fight to have it disappear on you. But very useful if you want to continue using things like swords. And if you've still got the lexicon, 
you can still have that one-handed sword available and still use your runic magic. The other two major combinations you'll be using will be blue followed by purple. You'll see in the bottom left that this has given me a buff. Without the additional effects, so because I've gone for the internalized lexicon, it only does a physical damage buff. With the extra effects, it would also do elemental. So that's one of the considerations you might want to make. Once you've got that buff on you, you can then actually do purple followed by blue, so the reverse. And that does a very nice heal, but it does use up that protection. But if you have that protection on you, either after a fight or in the middle of a fight, you can quickly do purple followed by blue and get a very nice heal put on yourself. Those are all of the major combinations that can actually be used for the runic magic. And you can see that obviously also has a great deal of versatility. So if you want to make a mage character, I really recommend using the runic magic. I'm now going to go through some of the other types of magic and where you can find them. Um, so you can see some of the other combinations that you could use along with the runic magic, such as some of the sigils and things like reveal soul and a conjure, which is what I have gone for. Hello, and let's continue with this guide on magic in Outward. So, hopefully you've already watched through the information on the runic magic, which I showed you in Berg. Now, we are at the Cabal of Wind Tower, located in Chersonez. Obviously, very much probably saying that name wrong. There is a guide on getting through this ghost pass, if you need that. But we are currently located here in the Chersonez area at this Cabal of Wind Tower. You can see it's located just behind me. And this is where we can learn some really cool magic. In particular, the wind magics and conjure. Obviously, it's a bit of a tricky area to go to. And in terms of being able to use the wind magic, such as this wind sigil, which is very useful because it doesn't need a stone like the other sigils do. You do, however, need to have activated the wind tower in that area. And here, I'll just very quickly show you where this one is in relation to the tower, just up on that hill here. And these are the towers you need to activate in each area to be able to use this wind magic. So you'll find one of these in each of the locations that you activate to be able to use all of these wind magics. But luckily it does mean that you don't need fire stones or cold stones. So we're just going to go see the shaman inside and I'll show you the magic he provides before I then actually show you what each of the magics do. So we're entering the hermit's tower. There's also a trader in here which sells some good stuff, some of the magic items, and is useful if you simply need a trader while you're out in this area. So once we do talk to the shaman, one of the main skills you'll find that he does is the reveal souls skill. It is one of the starting skills you could get when you go to the ley line, but if you went for the fire sigil, then this is the location you need to come to in order to then get that reveal souls skill. The Reveal Soul skill I will show you is an absolute must, I think, for any magically dependent build. So here we go, two people available, your trader and the shaman. Or, well, really, he's called a hermit. Excellent. So, Listen to I me. want to train with you. Here we go. Reveal Souls, obviously, is the main skill you can use. You need a soul to do this, so either things like bandits but also skeletons that you find around the area will often reveal a soul if you use this skill. You've then got a call to elements. Obviously gives you some sort of boon based on the area you are in. I don't know which area gives which boon. I haven't tried that out. But very low cost and useful in general. Mana push. Very good again as a magic build or even as a non-magic build to use. Gives a good pushback and is a cone effect. And again, weather tolerance, also just handy to have as a little bit of extra defense. Now his chain link increases the effect of any boon you use. So again, as a magic class, you're probably going to be trying to focus really on one type of magic. I mostly use lightning. 
So obviously if I were to use the Bless Boon and increase my Lightning Damage, it becomes even greater. You've then got the choice between the Sigil of Winds or the Infuse Winds. Now I went for the Sigil because obviously it puts down an AoE area I can use to cast additional combat abilities. If you've decided to use something like a melee weapon or primarily like to use your weapon, then obviously Infuse Wind is a good way to go. Or if you're trying to make some sort of spell sword, I probably could recommend the Infuse Wind as a good uh, source of extra ability for that little bit of mana you might have. The last ability then is Conjure. Really good skill to have, especially as a mage when you tend to be quite squishy. Especially if you've done like I have and went full magic and only currently have 50 health. Means you can summon a minion, a sort of an ethereal ghost with a sword and shield. Does do a good amount of damage and has a good amount of health. Um, and is also just particularly good at being a distraction. And again, doesn't cost a lot. But the conjure does mean you have to have revealed a soul to be able to use it. So it can be combined with other abilities. And in that sense, it only works if you've revealed a soul. So those two go together. Right, let's have a quick look then at what some of these skills do. I will have to go outside and try and find some dead souls to use. I'm sure I'll be able to find some with a graveyard nearby. Otherwise, we will simply come back to that. So, as you can see from my build, I've built together the runic magic with some of this wind sage magic. Uh, one of the main reasons I did that is because the runic magic does a lightning ball and the wind also has an AoE lightning attack and I'm currently cast, um, carrying sorry, a lightning staff. So my lightning abilities in general do hit harder. Um, but obviously if you wanted to go for more of the fire magics, you might want to consider other options or if you've not gone for the runic abilities. There is obviously a lot of versatility with these magic abilities. Right, let me just get my lantern back. So, let's just start with showing you what the wind sigil can do. So, it takes a bit of time to conjure down. And obviously you are restricted to this area for casting your magic. So I find that I can be very much on the borderline and still do the magic. So, for this one, obviously you've got spark. Again, a common starting skill. Obviously, when you're in the fire sigil, it launches out a fireball. But now in the wind sigil, does a very nice lightning AoE. Now, that is absolutely brilliant when I've got a group of bandits around me. They come charging in and I pop that skill off. Does a lot of damage to bandits in the starting area and in Berg. It can almost one-shot a lot of them. And with the spark, not actually having a very long cooldown does a bit of impact I tend to run around a little bit get their attention again pop it two times and most of them are dead so really easy barely even need the runic magic and doesn't cost us anything the other one you can use while in that wind sigil oh it just went away doesn't last very long is the wind push so the wind push normally just does a high impact doesn't do any damage but when cast in the wind sigil, does instead a lot of damage and still a high impact ability. I'll show you that when the wind sigil has redone its cooldown. For now, I'm going to quickly see if I can find a dead body. Which I should hopefully be able to find over at this graveyard without getting the attention and aggro of too many enemies. If this video cuts out suddenly, it's because I've taken too long to find a dead body to use. Okay, welcome back. I did manage to find a soul to use. So we've got this one here. And what I want to show you is that once you've revealed the soul one thing you can do is use spark and that actually absorbs the soul and gives you magic back 
but I'm going to instead show you this conjure skill. Oh, which didn't want to work. Apparently I wasn't close enough. It normally doesn't glitch out like that. There we go. Absorbed it and there is my minion. Again, follow you quite well. Sometimes I do find he tends to get a bit lost. I will have run off, turned around and he just doesn't appear to be there. But very handy to use, very good at distracting enemies. I think he's currently running around because I have the fight music going because I accidentally aggroed one of the minions over there. But again, all you need to do is find one of those souls, use your conjure skill and a voila. Obviously as you saw I tend to just use them from my skill list because obviously the limitations on the hotbar. Right, just to finish up then let's show you that wind sigil again and finish up with these skills. So, as I said, you've got this mana push, which you can see instead there, actually launches out a purple orb. And if used at close range, does hit really hard. And again, it's a conal damage ability, so mixing it with that on one, that on another, and you are annihilating the bandits as they come towards you. The other skill I've got currently hot barred is this mana one. Really good, so it means I won't take any damage for those sort of one and a half, two seconds that it's active. But I'm just going to show you now another few abilities because I did bring some stones with me. Where, here we go, here's the fire sigil. So again, this is the one that you're probably more common with. That again, you can use spark, launches out a fireball. And the other one you can do, so that mana ward instead now has actually given me both a buff and a debuff. It's given me the emulate buff, which increases fire damage, but I am taking fire damage. Doesn't last very long, but if you want to go for a fire build, it's a really good way to be able to increase your damage. If you've done something like enchant your sword or your weapon with fire and then combine it with your fireballs you're going to be hitting very hard sadly mana ward doesn't do anything in this area but you could still use it as your pushback the other sigil the ice sigil which i currently don't have which sadly i thought i had unlocked but it turns out i haven't yet unlocked the ice sigil I do know that in that area, if you use the mana ward, it actually then instead does an AoE ice attack. So for any of you that have unlocked that skill, that is another combination you can do. So you'll see then that obviously there's lots of things you can do with the magic. Obviously I've already talked about the runic magic. And here's an enemy deciding to come along and say hello. Oh, need to get out of that before I die. Oh, and the wrong skill. That one didn't do a lot because he's poison. And for some strange reason, my guy doesn't want to go and attack him. There we go. Now he's attacking. Isn't going to last very long against that poison. These guys are mostly just really annoying. Oh, I'm not in ah, annoying guys. Right. I hope you have found this video informative and helpful. Please feel free to use any comments if you've got any questions about some of this magic or where to find some of these other skills or if you'd like to see videos on any other forms of magic. Hopefully I've converted you over to this side of the game. Let's leave the swords and shields at home and pick up our staffs. Because magic in this game is actually a challenge and fun to play. Good luck and happy hunting everyone. <laughs> Today's